Good evening. Thank you for coming. I'm happy to talk about the subject and uh, glad that you all are interested. So, the role tonight, my role tonight, is to defend question three on the November 6th Massachusetts ballot. Colorado is very similar. We don't have to go through it. It's less than 2% of people in these states have cancer or HIV. Almost none have. It's very difficult to even find glaucoma. It, the vast majority is under this big category of pain. Not to downplay pain, because I'm pain. Who wants pain? I mean, that, that's, that's difficult. But the idea that it's less than 2% of these chronic conditions, these life-threatening terminal illnesses, I think is an important point. So, what about in Massachusetts? We're told that if it's passed, this is the tightest law written in the nation. I, that is where I take the most exception. The bill can list some conditions, this question three that we're voting on in November, but it does one little sneaky thing at the end. It says, other conditions as determined in writing by a qualifying patient's physician. So that means any physician, by the way, not your regular, any physician who thinks that any ailment you're going to benefit from marijuana from with. That's, I think, a huge loophole in this. Uh, the first year, there will be 35 marijuana stores in Massachusetts, and that number can be increased in future years. By the way, if the Department of Public Health just says we're going to drag our feet on doing those stores, which you can understand why they would be doing that, maybe, it doesn't matter. On January 1st, you can cultivate and have a 60-day supply, which is not defined in the law, of marijuana. Of the points that were made, but a little bit disappointed by the fact that the real issue in front of us is whether or not the state of Massachusetts is going to circumvent the FDA approval for um, marijuana's medicine. So I questioned Dr. Merrick, who seemed to gloss over the fact and in fact misinformed the audience on whether or not it is easy or difficult to do cannabinoid research in this country. It's quite easy. Cannabis is available and has been in California for decades. The Center for Medicinal Cannabis Research in California, which, which was supported by Governor Gray Davis. But you need to turn with, it into a question. Turn, with, turn it into yes, a question. With, million, with millions of dollars, they ended up with only two published studies after 13 years, and they canceled studies on cancer pain, on spasticity, on HIV, on cancer nausea. Why? There is lots of research used on the components of marijuana. There is virtually no research on smoked marijuana because government doesn't provide the approvals that would allow researchers to legally conduct such studies. That is misinformation because... Excuse me, it's, it's, me. it's a no, question sorry, and then an answer. Okay. Thank you. Next question. I'm a medical marijuana user. I actually, uh, I used to wrestle in this, at this high school, at this gym. Uh, that's, how I, that's how I end up with a bad back. I have daily pain, back pain. Um, Dr. Sabet, you, Sabet, you had uh, mentioned pain as being one of the number one uses for medical cannabis. No, what I said was that the vast majority of people in these states are there for pain and that that, that ranges. I mean, clearly, as I was saying, neuropathic severe pain is going to be different than what's happening in some places like California where people are coming in with, you know, they've done these underground, undercover investigations for people coming in with, you know, uh, sore ankle because of high heels or whatever. There's when, a huge when, range. When you, when, you, when you brought that up, though, you seem to, to discount people who are younger looking, um, people that had checked off the box for pain. And I find that that's, talking to hundreds of people, that is actually probably what most people use it for. There are cases like MS and AIDS that you mentioned, but that's, that's rare. Yes, there is a question. The, question. the question that I have before I was really interrupted by one of the campaigners for no in question three, which was rude to a medical patient in the state of Mass. Might I say, my question is this. When you, when you bring up the fact that 100% Marinol, THC, 50% pill form. When someone takes a pill, that knocks them out for like eight hours. Why can't I use a vaporizer? Ten, you said 10% was an issue. Why is 100% okay? 
100% THC is in marijuana. Okay. So we're looking at a leaf with 10%. I don't want 100% THC. I don't even want the 50. I want the leaf. You know, I don't want anything stronger or less strong. I want the medicine that works for me. You know, that helps me take my pain away. Um, the other so issue I have is wait, the, wait, wait, the, the wait, no, no, I want to finish this. The No on Three campaign has called us disingenuous as cannabis reformers. Uh, why should we trust anything you say when you seem to twist? It, there's a lot of twisting of the facts. Mr. Myron was all honest. I, I may not agree with everything he said tonight, but he wasn't trying to hide things. It, it always seems like you're trying to twist things for your benefit. Well, actually, my, and I responded to your email today, and I didn't check if you had responded back, but in terms of uh, the issue of twisting work. So I, I'm happy to, I'd like you know, just to know specifically where you think the no campaign so we could the, the disingenuous. Go when, you, when you say that we're disingenuous. We're, we're not going to have a debate. Uh, I'm asking. I'm happy, I'm answer the question. I'm happy to go through that. Well, so. How can we believe your words when you're saying we're disingenuous? When you say we're this vocal minority, when 65% voted yes on question two in 2008, 59 supports, 59 percent support legal right now, uh, medical, and even a higher number in the state of Mass support legal. You say it's some kind of rock, like, that we're trying to secretly legalize it, and all this rest of this. Okay, I, I, I understand the question. I can ask the question, but I think you've made your point. I, I'm asking you, though, how can we trust you? We get down there, and it wasn't my grandmother, it was my mother, and I lost it. I, and... I could not believe that I was in a hospital and my mother was dead. And I got wicked upset in the hospital. And my anger is taken on a positive note because I'm going to say something very strong right here. The United States government killed my mother. So in 2005, after I found out that this helped her, and then she wouldn't continue doing it because she was afraid that her doctor was going to find THC in her blood. It was nothing more I could do.